Good morning, it's lovely to see everybody here. Who here has a Twitter account already? Fine, in which case Ed split on how to get started with Twitter, we're just going to have to spin through. <laughs> <Should I? laughs> there are some interesting things that should be well worth talking about there. Um, my name is Miles Berry, um, my biography in 160 characters or less will be on screen in a little while's time, but my day job is looking after ICT education in Redhampton's Department of Education. I have a wild time, it's a great place to be. I'd like to introduce to you my colleague Andy Huang. Say who you are Andy, where'd you come from? Uh, my name's Andy Wayne, my Twitter biography will be up uh, shortly in 160 characters or less. Uh, I work as e-learning advisor uh, for the Department of Education um, with uh, learning services uh, based in the library. Splendid. And taking the theme from Paul O'Prey's introduction about students as collaborators, I'm very pleased to introduce Ed Rudge, who is one of our third year education students. I've just given away some of his Yeah, that's it. That's Tell me. the rest, Ed. Yeah, I'm a prim <laughs> third year primary student um, at University of uh, Roehampton. Um, yeah, seems not to be a student and hopefully be a primary school teacher in September, so using Twitter uh, as much as I can to gain as many ideas as possible, really. So. Okay, we're he where we're heading today, Ed's going to do a little sort of how you get started with Twitter, how you could get started with Twitter if you've not um, got an account set up already and if you're comfortable to do so, he'll walk you through that. Uh, my friend Andy here is going to do what a tweet looks like, the anatomy of a tweet, from the at to the hash really. Then we'll segue into a sort of how Twitter could be used for learning, how Twitter could be used for teaching, how Twitter could be used in research. Ed's going to do the learning bit, I'm going to do the teaching bit, and then we'll just show some pictures for the research bit. And then, all being well, we'll round off the morning with a sort of few cool tools which interface with Twitter. So that's where we're heading. Do you have questions that you've brought with you to the session that you don't think we're likely to answer in that format? Not yet. Not yet. Oh. That's going to be an annoying noise. It beeps every time somebody tweets. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> but at least it doesn't display the tweet on screen. Um, if interrupt us, please. This works much, much better as conversation and presentation. So please, anything which you'd like to ask, um, you know, do, please. Right, um, this is your bit. <coughs> OK, so I can sit there. Twitter. Twitter firstly began all the way back in 2006. So it's not a, an old social networking site. Um, it currently has at least around about 200 million users. Uh, and that, again, daily tweets. So 200 million tweets a day, which just shows you that um, it is growing. Um, as you can see, Mars M. Berry, Andy's is Andy T. Giza, and mine is primary ed, which makes sense really, primary education and myself being in, in teaching. So, your biography. Um, what I'll do is I'll take you through, I mean, the majority of you here do have a Twitter account. However, for those of you who don't, um, if I go escape, hopefully, what's the best? Just deliberately confuse you, I'm putting a Mac in front here. Yeah, no. Scroll up to the top of the screen, then you can swap over to the tabs. Right. Okay, so you'll be presented with something like this. And if you're new to Twitter, like a couple of you are in here, then just typing in your first name. Again, I'm not pressurising you to do this. This is something completely off your own, off your own back. You don't have to create one. I'm not pressurising you to do that today. But if, if anybody you... wants to, if they open up a web browser, go to twitter.com. Twitter.com, exactly that. Or just type in on Google Twitter, and then it'll be the first hit in Google. And then you'll be presented with a screen exactly like this, asking you to sign up to Twitter. Okay, so literally you're just wanting to type in your, obviously, your full name or your first name, and then your email. mail.co.uk and then pick a relevant password and then click sign up for Twitter where you'll be presented with a screen similar to this. Again if it's all green down the right hand side then you're almost good to go. Obviously I've chosen take just taking the short first name. Now here your username um, again, my username, like you saw before, was Primary Ed. I mean, that's quite irrelevant, quite meaningful to what I want to use Twitter for. So, 
If you want, you could keep it quite personal. You could keep it, say, my, I could keep it as ed.rudg if I wanted to. So that'd be quite a personal thing to me. Or I could, as I've decided to go for a primary ed, to make it so it looks quite sort of teaching related, quite topical, meaningful, relevant, whatever you'd like to call that. Okay, and then once you've, you're happy with those credentials, you can then move on to create my account. Okay, and then you'll just be presented with this just to show that you're not a robot. I'll never do this. Fingers, oh. N G E R E H I, I think. Could be. Okay, anything. That works. There you go. Okay. And then you'll be presented with a screen similar to this. And it says getting started in less than 60 seconds, so here we go. Click next. And then you'll be presented with a few followers that you might want to follow. I think this is related to sort of Roehampton University, I'm not too sure. So again, Stephen Fry, the usuals. Not that related to Roehampton University. <laughs> She's in my... Two, four, five. Okay. And then next. Again, you don't have to do any of this. I mean, I'll just skip all of that. It's just unrelevant. Again, quite irrelevant. Okay, and then you've got the opportunity now to upload and sort out your biography. Now, your biography or your bio, and it's what it's got for short here, allows other tweeters to find out more about yourself. So, I think this is possibly a good opportunity for yourselves to have a think in 160 characters. I'll give yourself sort of 10% either way, yeah. Roehampton University style. So uh, have a go, 160 characters. Write about yourself, see what, you can, see what you can think of. You can keep it relevant. You might want to think about interests, hobbies, what you do in your, in your work that allows other followers to, to get more information about you. And I'll put up on screen some of what Miles and Andy have, have as their biographies. But do, yeah, do ask any questions if you have any about writing a biography or if you're stuck on the set that you're not too sure about. Yeah, I was just having a quick check, make sure everyone was not playing games, I Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, so hopefully you've had a good sort of little play and uh, written your own little biographies. And again, we're not pressurising you to create a, a Twitter account today. I mean, it's something that can put you off your own back. You don't have to. You might want to do a bit of your own research or listen until the end of this lecture to, to uh, Has got gain a ideas. Biography that they'd be willing to read out to the group. Yeah. IT technician at Rockhampton University, married, two kids, occasional musician, that'll do. Full speed player. Thanks, my man. What are your 60 characters? It's as manageable like that. Uh, John, have you done yours? I have, of course, my Okay, <laughs> what have you got? I have written, um, edit your profile for a second. Um, I've written, um, Teacher of rock and roll pedagogy at university. <laughs> <laughs> and that's because I put a photograph of Elvis. I couldn't find a photograph of myself. The mistake which people often make is to go all those sightings. Anybody else got one they can read out? Not yet. So you, Laurie. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, mine's been boring. Did okay. a lecture in primary institute at Rockhampton, MSC, TEDx students, e learning, learning communities, and work to enthusiast, mum, film, and music. I think there's sort of three words to end. <laughs> so, any, any other volunteers? Okay. So again, with your bio, bio, you can see also we've got our, our own sort of mini display pictures, if you'd call that. Um, obviously, I mean, keep it, I mean, you can keep it as relevant or as personal as you like, really. I mean, obviously, you can see by Miles is sort of. That identity idea. I mean, you can so you can sort of still recognise um, again myself. You know, with a famous person. And that, Teddy Sharing. There you go. Again, profile pics that goes on. I mean, because when you first set up an account, it originally makes sure it's almost like a little egg. 
and you don't really want to. I mean, you can if you want. I mean, there's nothing stopping you to leave it like that, but it does look a little bit more professional if you put your own display picture up there. What's an egg? What's an egg? It's what you get given when you sign up originally. Um, you know, you just get these sort of different coloured pictures here. I mean, you can oh, see okay. here and here. I mean, everyone else has changed to meet their own sort of picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birds tweeting. Yeah. Oh. I think that's I think that's the the connection there. So. So yeah, I mean, who to follow? I mean, that, that is definitely something that when you have your biography up, it's something that I certainly look at when I want to follow someone different. When I'm looking to follow a teacher or a primary school teacher for ideas, a class that's tweeting out, I want to know, you know what they're doing. Are they year six? I mean, possibly I may not want to be following secondary school teachers, but primary school teachers definitely you know, being in my position. So. Um, by looking at your biography, it allows me to see what your interests are in, and then I can go, yeah, primary school teacher, ICT coordinator, yeah, more than happily follow that. Whereas if it was a, I don't know, singer or whatever it might be then, or whatever's not in my, my interest, then I wouldn't necessarily want to be following them. So again, keeping your biography up to date, relevant, specific, allows me to see, or allows other people to see who to follow, and who necessarily they might not want to follow. Is it worth folks having a go and finding people in their field on Twitter and adding them to their lists? Yeah, I mean, I Twitter think... shows how you can have to do this. Uh, Scroll up to the top of the screen. Tap I think I might need to uh, sign in as okay. me. I sign out. How do I sign out on here? You scroll up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to... Do I have to go back to Twitter? Change the URL to twitter.com and sign in. You're talking about the search box, yeah? yeah? you've got a search box at the top of your screen. If you type in you know, names of folk who are important in your field and see if you get anybody who sort of actually looks as though it's the same person with the right name, unlike sort of Ooh, like chancellors we know about. <laughs> oh, that's a... right. And then you can simply add them by doing, clicking on the follow button. It gets much more interesting once that sort of stream of news you're getting on the front page. Yeah. Um, Get there a second. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Oh. So if you then go to search up here, anything like primary. There you go. Then over on P. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if you if you did all see that. I mean, the search bar at the top here. If you type anything similar to primary teaching, primary school education, or whatever you well, your interests are in. That you yeah. Know that. Yeah. Or names of people that you know. I mean, it might be someone famous. It might be someone that you know personally that uses Twitter. Someone to FC on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm following. Yeah. And then you can click on people here. Ricky Lambert. And then you've got all your, all the possible uh, people to follow. And as you can see, the ones in blue that I follow, I mean, obviously, if you click on follow, then obviously yeah, that so takes you straight away. Take us through to ABC Primary Teaching there, Ed. Okay. And go to their full profile. And then if you look on the left-hand side at who their followers are, or who they're following, either of those, then that's other people. That, that, this is the sort of way the social network here works. As we found somebody who we think is quite interesting, who follows them, they may be interesting for us too. Yeah? You keep so branching out, out. keep branching yeah. out, exactly, yeah. And before you know it, you've got a massive network of how many hundreds of people following you and how many people, hundreds of followers that you're following. So it's, you know, it takes time. It doesn't all happen at once. It does take time, like anything. But before you know it, you've got a lot of people you're following and a lot of people being followed by. So, Go back to where you were. Yeah, That's is that one? And then switch, switch back. back. That's it. Okay. Yep. Any questions? 
Right. Well, um, a lot of new folk starting with, um, with Twitter. It's all a little bit confusing. Um, and most people, most people have got Facebook accounts. So they start off with Facebook and, uh, and you'll come across to Twitter and think, why do I need another one of these <laughs> status update things? Um, I've got one already, haven't I? And the difference between um, Facebook and Twitter is really in who you follow. With Twitter, it's a one-way thing. You can follow Didier Drogba, but the chances are Didier Drogba is not that interested in you. So he probably won't follow you back. So it's a one-way street, which is rather nice. So the difference between Facebook and Twitter is that Facebook's all about people you know or have known in the past or your old school friends. Um, and Twitter's about interest. It's about people. It's about subjects. So when you follow people on Twitter, um, as Ed just done, you can go up to the, uh, up to the search bar and you can search, for, um, you can search for the subjects you're into. So I'm into... Um, Education, so I can just type that in and we can look for people who are talking about education. So we've got the US Department of Education, I probably won't follow them because I'm not in the US. Uh, we've got uh, NASA um, and a load of other people who have mentioned education recently. So chances are I might want to follow someone like Cory Booker. Um, and to do that I just click on him and click the follow oh. button. And hopefully um, he'd tweet about education fairly regularly. Of course, if he doesn't tweet about education, I find that my activity stream is being filled up with loads of Cory Booker talking about something else, I just unfollow him. And so, um, that's, that's, as I say, that's the difference between Twitter and Facebook. This is all about interests. So you can follow people if you're interested in them, unfollow them when they get uninteresting. Um, so, um, and they can do the same to you. So it's a good incentive to make sure that you, you know, say interesting stuff. Anyway, like I said, when people do come to, uh, to Twitter for the first time, it's dead confusing, because um, you've, um, you've got all this new terminology, as with everything. So I'm going to try and explain some of the terminology to you. Um, and um, the main ones are at and hash. So I'm going to go from at, you know, from the start to the end, hopefully. Um, in a few short slides. So um, I'll just start us off with a little bit of terminology. Um, and some of it, some of it kind of sounds like slang, um, and it is really because Twitter's driven by people who make up these words, um, and you'll hear new words all the time. And chances are, I know when I met uh, Miles to prepare this last week, um, he told me that I don't actually have all the slang yet, <laughs> so I haven't actually included all of the terms on the I'm slide. Than you. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> Miles is cooler than me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say. Um, you wouldn't think it. <laughs> So anyway, um, we'll start off with what a tweet is, because I'm going to be using this quite a lot. A tweet is just 140 characters that you post up. Your biography, as you might have noticed, is 160 characters, and the idea was that tweets were supposed to fit into text messages, so that you could send them as a text message in 160 characters with a little bit of extra data in the extra 20 characters, hence 140. So a tweet is 140 characters. You'll be surprised what you can say in 140 characters. It's concise. <laughs> But um, it doesn't mean you have to talk in text speak, spook. Because um, you, you, you don't have to drop all of your, your, um, your vowels. It's OK. Punctuation's fine. Um, but what you can do to extend your tweets is put links in. Um, and the links you'll see on Twitter are normally shortened to t.com slash something. So you'll normally see them shortened. Um, they'll be about 10 characters long, which is rather nice. Um, Tweets, I'm going to throw in every now and again. Tweets are like Twitter peeps. Twitter people, Twitter users. Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, but that's what we sometimes call ourselves. Um, following, we've um, shown you earlier. Um, following someone means that you're, uh, you click that follow button and add their status updates, their tweets, their what are you doing now, to your activity stream. And the activity stream is that thing that you see when you log on to twitter.com with your username. Um, you can also log on on your phone um, to the activity stream and see all the latest stuff that the people you're following are tweeting about. Okay, so when we come on to, um, to Twitter, this is my twitter.com from this morning because um, I'm that well organised. Um, 
You can see that, um, that uh, we get um, a home page, which is what we're looking at now, a connect bit, and a discover bit. This is all a little confusing for the, the newbie who comes in and looks at this and says, what the, what does all this mean? So this is all the stuff. This bit here is my activity feed, which I outlined in the last slide. The activity feed, all of these people, I've clicked the follow button and I'm following. So I find these people interesting. They're not all interesting, but I find them interesting. Um, so all of their status updates, all of their, their tweets come up here. Um, and in amongst their status updates, you'll see different signs. There's this RT and there's this at symbol here that you can barely see on our badly rendered projector. So what does it all mean? All right, well, um, on your Twitter stream, I'm sure if you're looking at your Twitter stream now, you'll see a couple of these signs, at. The at basically means I want your attention. It means um, alerts. It means I'm sending you a message. I'm mentioning you. So when you um, put an at in a tweet, it needs to be followed by a username. If we look very closely, we'll see that there's at wide feed here. There's at JR Hill here and at SCN here. So the app means I want your attention. You need to see this. I'm mentioning you in some way. Um, and it's a way to publicly mention another user. And this is fairly useful um, in, um, in, in, um, on Twitter because you can say I've, I'm in a um, conference with at Miles Berry, at something, and mention them so you can give them a, a public nudge. Um, or you can point out how cool you are to other people on the web because it is a public, it appears in your public stream um, by um, you know, saying, you know, I'm here with presenting with at M. Berry. And that makes me look cool to some people, honestly. Um, so um, we can put the, um, the ads anywhere. We can put them usually there at the beginning of tweets. So um, here you have, um, I think we have some at here, at JR Hill here. So this is going to them with a short message afterwards. We can put the at message anywhere, the at symbol anywhere in the, uh, in the tweet. So you can say, I am in something with at someone. So that can go anywhere in the tweet. And all your at messages appear on the, um, the activity streams of all the people following you. So it is a public mention. All right. Also on this, um, this thing, and maybe on your own, um, on your own screens, you'll also see RT, probably. RT means retweet. Now, retweet is um, something where you are giving someone else credit for having stolen their ideas, really. Um, it's like saying, I've read this great piece by Wired Feed or Mashable or Mberry, usually, um, and I just want to say it again. So it's giving amplification to a good piece of content. So, um, so uh, yeah, RT is used, as I say here, to share um, content from other users. So here, Sylvia's read a piece by Wired Feed this morning, and she's saying, uh, retweet Wired Feed, da 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 So that's amplifying Wired Feed's content. Um, obviously, because it's got an app message there as well, Wired Feed is gonna get that message flash up on their screen too. Um, and uh, everyone knows that that originally came from there. So it's, um, it's like citing, referencing, if you will. Um, also, Twitter has another, um, it's, its own native retweet feature. Now, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of when Twitter take over what the community does. Uh, the community's been using RT for years, and everyone knows what an RT is. Um, now, if you go onto any of your tweets in front of you, you if you hover over them, you'll see that um, the, the, the word retweet pops up underneath. If you click that retweet button, you're not gonna get an RT before the, uh, the thing. You're not gonna get an RT at wired feed, you know, a username. Um, it's just gonna retweet it. It's just gonna copy it and send it out and say retweeted by. Um, so you will sometimes notice that on your stream as well, but it's the same thing, it's the same thing as a retweet, except with a RT at username, you can also edit it before it goes out. Everyone clear so far? Good stuff. Um, okay. Um, and the last thing I'm going to cover um, is this hash. I did say I was going to go from A to hash. Actually, that's not true. I do have another slide after this. Um, the hash bit. Hash and yes, indeed. Maybe I should put that in here as a title. The, um, the hash bit um, is used to um, highlight information in your tweet. Um, so here we're seeing the word sphere highlighted and zoomer highlighted, and we also see in forum highlighted. Um, 
If you're in the, um, in the keynote this morning, you probably noticed peop um, that there was uh, signs out saying, tweet, hashtag LTUOR. And the cool thing about hashtags is that people don't generally say the word hashtag in conversation. So if you put a hashtag before a word, it'll make it kind of stand out. Um, so um, here we've got the word spear with a hashtag before it, and what Twitter's done is turn that into a link. So if you see a hashtag, all of those hashtags are turned into links. And what you can do is you can tell people at a conference to tweet out using the hashtag LTUOR. And the nice thing about that is everyone who has the, the hashtag LTUOR is now going to be aggregated in one place. If you click on that thing there, if you click on anything with a hashtag, it will search Twitter for all of the instances of that hashtag. So it's a really nice way of aggregating all your stuff. Now I've done this in class where I've said, okay, I've got a class and uh, I want you all to use this hashtag. The cool thing about that is that after the, the class, everyone can come back and see the, the output of that particular class. Um, so it's pretty good for creating what we call a back channel um, for events um, with you know, the similar hashtag because people won't say that by accident. So it will aggregate stuff. Finally, um, I'm just going to add this one in. You don't need to know this one, a lot of people don't. But if you put um, the letter D, usually I'll put in capitals, um, and someone's username minus the at, so D space Mberry. The space is vital. The space is vital. Get the space and it goes to the whole world. Yep, and it <laughs> makes you look incompetent as well, anyway. <laughs> Not that I've done that it's before. So, uh, so yeah, do stick, uh, do stick a space in. Um, D and space username um, allows you to send a private message to people. So if you, um, if you don't want the rest of the world to know, then um, put a D, their username, and send it to them. Um, and that just about covers... Oh yeah, um, with, um, with direct messages, they have to be following you in order to receive them. That's all you need to know. Um, right, any questions on the basics of Twitter? No. Oh, super. Do come and see me I afterwards. I know I do a tweet. Oh, very good. Different. Um, okay, should I do one? Yeah. yeah. Right, come then. To do a tweet, um, you just need to go to your home page. Yeah. Up here. Should we follow you first? Should we follow you first? Um, you don't have to follow me if well, you don't I, want to. I won't see your tweets unless he follows you. But well, I won't see you unless I do follow you, isn't that right? You won't see his tweets unless you are sign into him. your... Twitter. You won't see yeah, your tweets. Right. Okay, I'm yeah. not going to tweet anything. Okay, I'm just going to yeah, Okay, so to send a tweet, then um, just go to uh, to home, and there's a bit up in the top that says compose a new tweet. Oh, we're sending an Ads account. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to send anything, yeah. but um, <laughs> but should you want to, um, <laughs> I'm presenting. Excellent value for money. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, 140 characters in there. The uh, word counts down at the bottom, uh, the letter counts down at the bottom, so you know how many more you've got. And just hit the tweet button at the end. Um, like I say, you can put um, you can put hashtags in there if you want to uh, if you want to say that you're presenting at um, L T U O R, um, etc. And you can put um, at symbols in and right and you know get people's attention as well. Should you wish to do that. At what point do you put in this? Private thing, so you put D. Okay. Um, okay. So if we wanted to send a private message, let's say that um, that um, Ed wants to send a private message to um, Miles, we just put it in as D and Berry, just like that, and then we'd say, uh, "Help, Andy has taken over." Okay. And uh, that doesn't go out on his public profile, but uh, Miles will receive it in his. In his personal inbox. Um, and all of those personal messages will appear in here, in your direct messages. So yeah, those uh, those D ones appear in the direct messages, and the uh, at ones will appear in this connect column here. So we see that. Uh, where is it? Connect. There you go. So this is where. Uh, where Miles has mentioned primary ed, we see primary ed being mentioned here as well, and here as well. So the connect column shows all your app messages, the uh, direct messages bit shows all the 
messages that you're getting privately? Yeah, I'm switching between them. Can you see them aggregated? You can see them aggregated, but usually if you're using um, an app of some sort. So um, I've got a Twitter app or a number of Twitter apps on my on my phone and on my browser. Um, and usually I, I don't use Twitter.com very much. I tend to use tend to use apps. Um, and yeah, they some of them do aggregate the, the direct messages and the app messages all in one place. Um, I find them a little a little easier to use. Cool. Brilliant. I'm following everyone. Okay, um, oh, right, where were we? Academic Twins, there we go. Thank you very much, Andy. Oh, we've seen all of that. What else? Okay, so I want to think about Twitter in the context of our work. Um, firstly, looking at it from the learner's perspective, um, you have folk like George Seaman and Stephen Downs coming up with this theory they call connectivism. They describe it as a learning theory for the digital age, that given that we have pretty much ubiquitous access to all the world's knowledge. You know, with the device in my pocket, I can answer you know, any general knowledge question. You know, when's the Battle of Bosworth sort of thing? I can get you an answer to that in 30 minutes, 30 seconds time, give or take. Then the process of learning, the pro process of knowledge acquisition becomes a different thing. It's not so much the knowledge that one has. It is making connections between the knowledge you have and the knowledge you want, but also access to all of that knowledge out there. As no access to knowledge continues to grow and evolve, access to what is needed is more important than what the learner currently possesses. Not perhaps in every domain, but in many of them now, that the web has changed this. And of course, you know, you say to one of your students, go and find out about, and what will they immediately do? Anybody? Google it, yes. Is anybody in the room, just out of interest, using another search engine? Isn't that interesting? We've got to this. What do you use, Karen? Um, I, I, I vary. Right. I start with Google and then I try something else. Does it help to try something else? Sometimes. Not often. Google is very good at what they do. Sometimes I use Bing because that's what the university is sometimes. Because it's set as the default to my computer. When I've asked my students this, you know, sort of a sample of 150 of them, anybody not use Google, we have usually one where in a group that I ask, and why is that? Well, because it's set on my computer and I can't find out any way to change it. Mm -hmm. Good for a little tutorial there. But we've got to this point where one organisation controls so many people's access to, in to information. That's significant and possibly quite scary, I would suggest. There are other ways of finding things out as well, and part of that is in involves asking people. And this is where Twitter has the edge over Google, that it allows you to connect to people who may know the answer to things. And Tobin, writing back in 1998, talks about this notion of the personal learning network, which we give the handy three-letter abbreviation PLN. And that's going to explain, I think, a few of the slides which Ed is about to show you about how he uses Twitter as a student, as a learner. OK, so a PLN. Um, again, being a student, being in my final year, I'm being hit with so many resources and ideas and I'm just going where do I go what do I do next you know, looking for a job in September things like that so I'm trying to gain as much many ideas as possible obviously Google has its you know advances I can just type in you know resources for a geography lesson or whatever it might be but Twitter I mean it's taken me a while to build it up but when I start following people teachers then follow me back I've then got I don't know currently about one and a half thousand primary school teachers following me that starts to build up a pretty good resource for resources and ideas. So this is pretty much building you know, your, your PLN, your, um, your personal learning network. Um, but like I've said, it does take time. Don't expect everyone to follow you at once. Check it often. Make, you know, just to show that you're, you are still there, that you haven't just left Twitter over a year or two because people will start to not follow you and then you know, just go downhill. So just tweet, I mean, tweet daily or maybe once at like six, seven o'clock in the evening. That's always quite a, a good time to tweet when many people are online. And retweet to show that, you know, again, just to prove that, you know, what you're putting out there is re of relevance and, 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 you know, your interests. I think that's, that's key. Again, 
ideas from PLN. I mean, this is just a typical tweet from a teacher here. Top 100 tools for learning in 2011. Again, the link's there. Yeah, I love that. Bookmark that. Thank you. So, again, you can retweet that out or you can favourite it. Very easy. Just click on favourite just there and then it'll just come up as the new favourited there. It's quite a useful one to have because then it'll store all your favourites in your in your um, favourite sort of timeline, so to speak. Again, sharing ideas. Again, here's a here's a safe engine, uh, safe search engine I found for you for teach for children to use when they're um, you know in IT or whatever it might be at school. So a safe search engine for children to use online. There's the link. There's a couple of hashtags and a couple of people have favourited and retweeted there for me. So again, just shows that I put that out there and other people can take ideas from me and vice versa. I was on school placement and I was thinking, I need some new behaviour management strategies. Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> did you get any replies from I the did. Class, Sorry? Did you get any replies from children? No, class? unfortunately not. No, no. But I did get a lot of ideas and a lot of resources from that on new ideas and behaviour management strategies. So again, that was really helpful, especially tweeting out ideas such as, I know, I need an idea for I don't know, a geography lesson, or I need an idea for you know, teaching this subject, teaching this topic, any ideas, you'll be surprised how many people then get back to you with, yep, you could use this, here's the link, and it just takes that, makes that process so much easier. And answer, answering questions. You know, friends ask, you know, if iPads are useful, you know, if I, if I had an experience, you know, I could say, you know, use my iPhone when I'm teaching and things like that. Really nice to again share collaboration. I think that's so key with Twitter. That whole notion of sharing and working together, you know, with your followers. I mean that just builds up the respect between you and and your followers. And uh, UK Ed Chat. Now this occurs every Thursday evening between eight and nine o'clock. And it's and it's always on a specific topic. And I'm trying to remember what this one was on. And I think it was on the a lot of questions. Yeah, so just the use of questioning in the classroom. This was useful because it was one of my learning and teaching essays, so it has its advantages. So again, just posting out ideas, get gaining ideas, so you can see all the different people that have tweeted out, what they tweeted, and it's all here. And then you can just interact. Oh, I think questioning, you know, the use of opening question closed questioning, et cetera, et cetera, high order, level thinking questions. Again, you can just gain so many ideas eight, between eight and nine o'clock every Thursday evening and it's held by a tweeter. Um, again, and you can chat and discuss your own views, your own ideas, you know, what do you think? Again, just by pushing, putting the hashtag there, UK Ed Chat, that allows you to, allows other people to see your ideas. Again, you've got all that. And the folk who are tweeting in these conversations of, again, people who you might want to follow, exactly. might follow you back, they add into this personal learning. It's aspect. the whole sort of community idea, you know, everyone sort of working together. Um, again, why do educators use Twitter? Um, like I said before, I think that whole idea of gaining ideas, I mean, now you see even, you know, Year five, year six classes tweeting out what they do. Mm. When I'm, you know, working away, and then all of a sudden check Twitter. Oh, today I learned how to from Tom or whatever it might be. And you're just thinking, great, you know, other classes working with other classes. You know, oh, here's a nice, you know, here's a picture of what we did today. Here's a class piece of work. Anyone have a clue how we, would, you know, how we would level this piece of work? You know, what would we do? You know, this is, I mean, it's can, used the right way. This can be a really useful resource. I mean, the amount of links that I've saved to my bookmarks is growing by the day. Uh, Useful resources, primary school teaching resources, class blogs, all ideas, you know, teaching resources. It's, it's just becoming so much easier, well, just making it that little bit easier, being a primary school teacher to, to teach. And again, yeah, again, sort of the idea of, you know, communication, fresh ideas. I mean, this is just people's views I tweeted out. You know, I'm giving a Twitter presentation. What are your what are your views? You know, to communicate with others, educators. You know, fresh ideas. Again, sort of the virtual learning environments. And I think 
Miles is now going to sort of uh, go segues on, on very nicely in the stream. Part of your learning process has been talking to teachers about how they're using this, and I want to think now a little about other ways of using Twitter in a teaching context when we're, we're working with grown-ups. Um, partly, this is outsourcing my lecture preparation. So, you know, I've got this, give this seminar on reflective practice in the primary curriculum. My personal learning network can probably write many of those slides for me. So, just sort of tweet it out. You know, could, how would you respond to this question? You know, which one of the ones which we address is why teach ICT? And so, got interesting responses. Simon Ellis, one of our colleagues here, research more effectively, best communication skills. Industry screaming out for ICT professionals, not ICT users. So 140 characters or less from that wider community, they're bringing all of those different perspectives into the lecture room, which for the courses which we work on is a useful thing to be able to do. Um, there's also this, again, the, the notion of the students as, of students as our partners, as our collaborators in the process, that if you're comfortable with the notion of following them, them following you, then that insight into what it's like being a student at Roehampton is something which many of them feel very comfortable sharing on Twitter. If you've got nothing better to do, search for Roehampton on that Twitter search tag and see the sort of thing which people are saying about it. So, you know, one of our second years here talking about what's happening in her placement and those sorts of in insights into, dread phrase here, the student experience, I think are valuable ones. Um, then there's this notion of, well, we need Moodle. You know, we love Moodle. Don't get me wrong, Andy. This isn't going to be okay. Delete the recording now. <laughs> all well and good. But is you know what we use Moodle for? Is this not something which we could actually use Twitter for? Could we move to the point of, of Twitter is my BLE? Well, probably not. In all honesty, but there's plenty of things that you could do. So you know the sharing sources. There is this really interesting article by Ken Robinson. Have a look. At, you know this is a quote from it. This is the link to the Google Books copy where you can read the page. Put that into context. We can do that in Moodle very easily, of course. But we can also do it from the device in our hands to the devices in our students' hands in real time during the middle of the lecture. You could even say to them, okay, you find some interesting sources to back up this argument or to contribute to this debate. And they go off and use the devices which they brought with them, sometimes larger than this, sometimes not, and tweet that into the course tag or into the list um, where you're there. You can also share media with Twitter. You know, this was just a picture which one of my colleagues' friends wanted to have a look at again. So, you know, found the thing on my desktop put it into the tweet, and that sends it out. And that picture is then embedded in the tweet. So here's a lecture slide, which I'd like you all to look at, is something which you can do. You can do the same thing with video. You can't actually get a much video into 140 <coughs> characters or less, but you can put it up onto YouTube and then send the link to the YouTube page there on Twitter. Very polite, it sort of embeds that inside the tweet, and then you can watch that from the Twitter page rather than going to the YouTube page. So if you're doing that sort of lecture casting thing, saying, I'd like you to have a look at this, then again, directly into the device in your student's hands, if you've set up the sort of course tag or the course list. Which brings me to the notion of course lists and course hashtags. Helen had, um, was teaching... Helen, do you mind me using this? No. <laughs> I should have checked that beforehand. <laughs> We've got um, our year two ICT specialists doing this using the web to establish learning communities, and they decided that they wanted to, to set up that Twitter group and all of them tweeting there. So this was the sort of first things which they were posting into that Twitter list. Now, we didn't go much further with it. We had already sort of planned our module without <laughs> Twitter there. I don't know. Do, do you have in mind, do you want to talk more about this experience? Yeah, that's something that kind of evolved as part of the project. You know, we were talking about learning communities and perhaps it's something that I should have perhaps planned for in the first place. I blame but your subject leader, I really during do. The, during the project and our students, oh, let's start, you know, we're learning about Twitter, let's start using it. So it was just kind of an initial, you know, step put into the water, they were just testing the ground really on this. But next year, I think it's something that I will set up as part of the course for, right from the start, really. And you can put together in the Twitter interface a list of people to follow. This yes. is the bit where a live demonstration it's is moderately good. useful. Ed, do you have lists set up? Shall I uh, use mine I now? I think so, no. Okay. Um, and a lot of the students will be beginning to follow a lot of the um, academics that we were discussing and the, the ideas that we were discussing in, in um, our lectures. So it worked. It linked in really well. And then there were... 
there's a group of students doing a similar course at Brighton University yes. said, what you're doing sounds really interesting. Can we collaborate? Can we work across? And that sort of yeah. beyond the bounds of the institution thing. Twitter is brilliant at this sort of thing. So, and, oopsie daisy, we're having trouble pulling some of this information across the network here. I think it's complaining because I'm logged on on too many computers at the same time. Um, so here's lists. Loading seems to be taking a little while. Uh, right, I'm do, going to do one refresh, and then if it doesn't work, we'll give up. Okay, don't do live demonstrations. There's a lesson there, isn't there? But you can curate one of these lists, set up a list for the students doing your course, add them as they create their Twitter accounts and tweet you about it, and then they can go to that list homepage and see all the other activity from the other students on that list. So it's one way of setting up that sort of Moodle forum type thing without bothering to have Moodle. Okay, <laughs> sorry, Karen. Right. The other way of doing that is the course tab. Just I'm so sorry, I missed it to understand. Where do you create the list? Okay, it's hard to show you because it's not working properly. Oh. But um, when I'm logged in, I go to my profile page here. So view miles, but view profile page. I go to lists, and then it should show me the lists that I've created here. But it's being silly and not doing what it's supposed to do. If I want to create a new list, I simply click on create, call it, um, I don't know, L-T-U-O-R, um, say what it's about. I can make it a public list so that can be shared with the whole world, or a private list that only I can see. Regrettably, there isn't the middle band which Moodle would do for us, of saying this list is shared only with the members of this list. It's either or, or just me. <laughs> so, you know, the, 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 the people I stalk, obviously, it's a private list, but the you know, ed tech people that I want my students to follow, I do as a public list. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry that the live demonstration doesn't help. work. Just send you one. Just send Thank you. A picture of Q. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? The other way of doing this is to use the course tag. So, just as we're using hash L T U O R, for today's event, why not use hash QTS 0109028X or something possibly a little more memorable as the hashtag for your module? And so anytime anybody tweets that tag, that's again shared with everybody else on that course and indeed the whole of the world. So Dave Cormier here doing this sort of massively open online course using the tag ED366. And then just curating all of the tag, all of the tweets that go into that for anybody else who's interested in following that module there. Okay, oh, it's gone very large. Twitter and research. Um, lots of possibilities. Um, if you're interested in looking at how you use Twitter in a research context or how you use online tools, the whole digital scholarship thing, from a research perspective, I very much recommend Martin Weller's book, The Digital Scholar, or I think it's The Digital Scholar. He says, the quote up on the screen there, if researchers had intentionally set out to create a tool for promoting interdisciplinary discourse, the resultant service may not have looked dissimilar to Twitter. I think he's being optimistic there, not modesty, but it's a lovely idea. And he makes a convincing argument for Twitter is ideal for bridging the connections between one discipline and another, and also you know, how important that is. Um, those of you who are still working towards your PhD or are interested in the process of how others work towards their PhD, whilst ed, you know, ed, enthusing about UK ed chat, there's also hash PhD chat which has an hour's gathering on a Wednesday evening. So you can go to both. Um, and they tweet again about a particular topic of interest. The most recent one is how do you handle feedback? And then we've got a whole list of the sort of responses which people have put into that conversation, which goes on and on and on. Not quite the sort of 100,000 words you'd need to submit it as a dissertation, but you know, it's, there's, there's a lot of conversation going on there. The conference tag thing, we've we're, we're using today, hash L-T-U-O-R. Is that enough plugs for it, do you think? I mean, Getting that way. Okay. Have you been at conferences where you've seen this sort of thing going on, with people sort of tweeting about the event? Okay. It's fascinating to watch this back channel process. This was when I was out like a month ago, and people are still tweeting there. You know, this was a tweet put into the conference back channel. 23rd of May, that's today, isn't it? So, you know, folks actually you know, still continuing the conversation which started when we were all down together in Plymouth like a month ago now. Um, anybody been at conferences where the Twitter feed is 
displayed at the front of the room. If not, come along this afternoon. <laughs> it's good to be. Good to you. I will be displayed at the front of the room. It's <laughs> it's an interesting. Yeah. No, nobody else been there. Yeah. How well, how did it go? It's it's okay as long as what's happening is a positive experience. Yes. But it's a bit of a daunting prospect <laughs> to have people's kind of it's like having people's Heckling. muttering being broadcast. So you're standing here too. presenting and yeah. over there, out of your field of view, but in everybody else's, is what the people on Twitter are saying about your presentation. <laughs> you know, instant feedback. You know, yeah. first thing I do when I sit down is go and have a look at what people have said about the presentation. There's a clue there, folks. Positive feedback, please. <laughs> well, it's really great for, um, you know, going back and seeing what's happened, what's been turning our archives. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. Report back on it yeah. captures yeah. the event yeah. so well, I think. And it captures what not just so much what's said as what people thought about what yeah. was said. So it's filtered through the minds of other clever people, which is worth doing. It, when it goes badly, it's horrible yeah. though. So you've got somebody who's not very good at what they're presenting, perhaps, or do, is pitched it wrong for their audience is more the issue. Mm -hmm. And then all of these criticisms hitting. It gets quite embarrassing. So yeah. Yeah, I think that that's. I think it's great to have kind of the access to people's thoughts and be able to like refer to it afterwards. Yeah. I'm not sure whether it needs to be live, and I'm not sure what the actual benefit of it being up on the screen. It's something we can is. do. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's an element of technology. It's really yeah. you should be giving your the presenter your attention. And that's that's so, I, that is interesting. You know, those of you who've been watching, I've been sort of following the Twitter stream and, and checking on email here. As far as I'm the students, really, I'm not. All the students are facing that head. <laughs> but can you multitask these things? Now, are, there, okay, are there occasions when actually the best use of your time at the conference is to keep up with the institutional email? Is it a case of the conversation? You know, you know what academic conferences are like. Somebody stands up and does a 20 minute presentation, and there's very little, often very little, interaction or engagement. The back channel is where that conversation can take place. That we sometimes, I sometimes, find I learn more through the conversations about than necessarily what the person's saying. Hi. That could be very disruptive, though. Oh, I yes. Disruptive and disruptive. Yeah. I mean, I've tried to make my research conferences interactive. Yes. I think people are quite surprised when I do it. But it's, uh, <laughs> the, um, they're probably quite surprised by the course of it as well. <laughs> but the, um, I, think, I, I think it could be, if you're very knowledgeable of the material, I think that could be, along the lines of what you described, it could actually be very interesting mm. see how people are responding to it. If you're not terribly knowledgeable of the material and you have to follow quite closely either the data that's being presented or the concepts that are being put forward, then I think that would be a distraction. I think I'd want to just ignore what was happening over there. Um, with regards to the actual experience of presenting himself or herself, you're going to hear a lot of criticism that there. Not because, for the reasons you mentioned, not because necessarily that, that what's being said is in any way uh, weak or poor, but rather pitched perhaps to the wrong mm. audience. And that could be really quite, oh, yeah. that could be extremely yeah. disruptive and really it's sort not of, you know, it's very threatening for people. I don't know what your feelings are. I, I wouldn't want to be criticised, what I would call sneakily, really. If people got something to say, they didn't put their hand up and say it, all adults, you know? Say, excuse me, John, we know this. Yeah. Could you take it further forward? Or could, I think that seems to be the much more grown up way of doing it. There is a tendency with that anonymity, or maybe you're not. It's anonymous. not anonymous. Well, no, That's fine, fine, fine right. But there is that sort of way of sort of getting at people, yeah. which I would feel uncomfortable, I think, with really. mm. even participating in that thing. I'm, I'm conscious that we are kind of out of time. But I think at the same time, you could say it gives the speaker, in this case, you know, an opportunity to, to sort of check yeah. in what's happening with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. One of the things yeah. which Alec Kuras did at Plymouth that I wanted to so much to do for today is automatically tweet during the presentation. As, as you get to a slide, it sends a tweet out on your behalf. It's, it's technically tricky, and because I'm using weird presentation software this morning, it all fell down horribly for the last minute sort of thing. But it's, a, it's one way of engaging with the back channel during the presentation. And I've seen people that are sort of, as presenting, they've got the phone on display. How they manage to read and present at the same time, I don't know. And I think also more and more people don't actually go to it struck me earlier when you were talking about having the, uh, like the live feed up and, yeah. and, and somebody said that uh, it was like somebody muttering. Uh, but that's what you do in, 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 
in lectures, you, you're taking notes and then you miss something. So you turn to your neighbour and you say, ah. what, 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 what did he say about that? Yeah. Right. that. So in fact, you could almost do that as a, <laughs> like a mutter to everybody. Yes, yes indeed, what the hell yeah. Did that guy say about? Like, okay. And then somebody will tweet back and say, oh, you spelt it this way. I am absolutely out of time. I want to show before we stop um, the downside stuff. It's not an entirely positive experience. This is essentially a public space. This is why Twitter can't quite be uh, Moodle, that whatever we do on Twitter stays on Twitter. Um, that yes, you can keep your messages, your status updates private and only share them with people who you've invited to see them. But essentially, if you're going to do this for one of your courses, if you're going to do, use this in your learning, teaching, research, you're sharing it with the whole world. Now, that, in terms of impact for the research aspect, is a really positive thing. In terms of the teaching learning process, I would see it positively, but not everybody would necessarily agree with me there. Spam is sometimes a problem, particularly with really popular hashtags. And you know, if you're saying to everybody, follow the hashtag LTUOR, and then suddenly the robots start posting porn into that, that doesn't reflect terribly well on any of us, really. There are issues of identity in this public versus private thing. Uh, interesting, some of you setting up separate accounts for work. And you know, this is, this is me, this is where I talk to my friends, this is my public place where I'm talking to the students that I'm working with which I think many would see as, as good practice. I'm not so sure about that. I only have the one account, but that sometimes means I don't necessarily say absolutely everything I think um, into that account. And but sometimes you do. Sometimes I do, yeah. I, I, not, you know, I, I, it, I, there's a, there is a okay, mental we filter. We all wanted to see your there, baby anyway. There is, well, yeah, but, you know, it's me. I, mean, I, I, this, I take the Zuckerberg line of, you know, there is one person. Um, others see this differently. But there's an interesting conversation there, which I'm afraid we don't have time for. <laughs> Twitter is transient. Library of Congress are keeping copies of all of the tweets, as I'm sure are other organizations, but it's very hard to get back to them. So, you know, if once sort of four or days or a month or something is passed, finding a tweet again is a non-trivial operation. There are ways of archiving this. You're also relying on a third party thing for this. Anybody else, any concerns, any downside that I've not listed on the bullet points there? Information overload? Too much information, TMI, isn't it? Yeah, and the list things help. So yes, I've got a fair and a half thousand people that I follow. <laughs> But I also have a list of 140 Dunbar's number of uh, the people who are actually interested in what they've got to say. Um, and a smaller list again of you know, colleagues here that I keep track of what they're talking about. And smaller list of other communities that I'm part of. So yeah, once you get above 140 followers, you've got to find some way of filtering out the stuff that doesn't Is there a way to filter? Well, oh, yeah, I mean, the list things works very, very well. Um, there are other ways of doing that, but that list seems, again, like Andy said, Twitter, you know, the community invented solutions and then Twitter said, okay, we like this solution, everybody kind of should go and use that now. Not everybody does. You were about to say something. One quick question. Mm -hmm. um, is it consensitive when you're putting in hashes? Um, no, hashtags are generally case insensitive, usernames are insensitive. Um, most of the time it will tolerate, it will uh, match Irrespective of the uh, I have a question just out of curiosity. I just wonder how long you spend on Not as much as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> um, it goes in places. When I was at a conference, I would tweet a lot because I find that channel a very interesting thing to engage yeah. in. When I'm working here, very rarely. Is that because I don't do anything which is interesting? Not really, but it's, you know, it's, it's thinking of the interesting things to say. So, I'm, I mean, if you look at my Twitter stream, often that's a shining example. A couple of tweets a day, typically. You know, it's something interesting that I've read, I will tweet about. And I give in to the question. You know, I've got nothing better to do on reading, watching TV, have a look at the Twitter feed, and, you know, there may be an interesting conversation about So I don't sit at my desk and say, right, it's half an hour of tweeting now. Um, I don't think that would be the way that many of us do it. There are some folk who do um, tweet for half an hour in the morning, and oh, yes. um, it's quite annoying because you get a big stream of them and then nothing for the rest of the day um, and that's that's very easy to ignore mm. um, so yeah I find um, that uh, yeah having some sort of rain on what you're doing is 
quite useful because um, you, you've got to make sure that what you're tweeting, like I say, is interesting, otherwise you'll be unfollowed. Sorry. Uh, just a quick uh, question. You were talking about terminology yeah. Uh, yeah. earlier on. There are a couple which there are a couple which have come on, which I don't know anywhere. I'm conscious that we need to end. <laughs> Let me ask answer those questions for anybody who wants to the end. A couple of books if you're more interested in going further. Martin Weller, The Digital Scholar, is very, very good, and it's, there's an, the online edition is very free. It's free. Uh, this also is free, using Twitter and university research teaching and impact activities. Um, you know, if I'd had time to prepare notes for you in advance, it would have looked a bit like that. This is done by the LSE's public policy group. I can send you all the links via Twitter to both of those <laughs> texts. Um, if you want to use any other means of communication, um, that's our first names, come and talk to us. Um, that's our Twitter handles if you want to DM or at reply, or we have this sort of wonderful email thing still. <laughs> more than welcome to use. I'm so sorry we've overrun. Joe, I'm really no, sorry about no, that. I'm sorry, but about, five, about four minutes to get up to uh, email. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, yeah. say thank you so much to uh, Miles and Ed and Ali for a very, very good work. <laughs>